What's up guys, Anton Sawyers here, and today we're going to be looking at the MXL 990 condenser microphone. So this is the microphone you're, I'm talking to you from right now. So about two months ago, the last video I, re I uploaded was the, the video on the Alienware Alpha and my thoughts about that. And right after that video was done and uploaded, my blue snowball broke. So the little white piece inside where you plug the, I guess the printer kind of cable, I don't know the word for it right at the moment. You plug that in, the white piece inside the microphone broke into the wire, and then the pins had bent. It was a whole mess. Now I bought the MXO 990. So, I guess, like, I, I dove in from USB microphones to XLR. So, XLR is analog. Analog is another type of interface other than uh, USB. And USB is what we call, like, conventional. Or it's uh, normal, like uh, average. And uh, XLR is more of a professional grade sounding sound. It's a different connection. So it's, it's a more industrial grade wire. And uh, let's see if I pull the wire up right here. So this is the connection. I have this exact wire. It's a pretty long wire. It's about 20 foot. You don't need 20 feet. I'd, I'd recommend smaller. This is way too long for what I bought, um, for what I need actually. But um, XLR is this. It has uh, three prongs. So this goes into your microphone. It clicks on, and this goes into your audio interface. So with this microphone, you can't just plug in play. It's not gonna plug into. You can't buy this microphone without buying an interface to plug to your computer. So that's where this comes in. This is the Behringer uh, X Xian X three hundred two USB audio interface. I don't know how to pronounce the middle word. Um, so this is the audio interface I bought, and this is the one that's the sound is going through right now. So what this allows me to do is um, I can change the gain, the mic volume, all different things on the actual microphone to make it the, the sound quality sound better, worse, <laughs> to play around with it. And this gives you the ability and as you get this control. And then the main thing is you can convert from the XLR to USB from the microphone to your computer so then you get your sound through this to your computer and they have their drivers and stuff and it's it's really cool and I actually didn't know about this stuff till kind of recently and now I'm playing with it now because I basically just got my microphone today so this is not going to be like a full review it's kind of like a just a, uh, a kind of a first introduction to what is going on and um, when you get this this requires something called phantom power so you can buy you can just buy a converter so there, there, you can just buy, like, that's the thing I was looking for. I was like, when I first saw that you need a special connection with this, I was like, oh, let me just buy a XLR to USB. But you can't do that because the wire itself does not give power. The wire itself needs power. So this is in this box, this has power in it. This gives phantom power because without phantom power, this microphone wouldn't be recording. It wouldn't turn on. Um, you can do another setup where you have it where you get the this XLR to USB connection and then you buy a phantom power supply, which is very similar. It's a much smaller box than this, and it just has an XLR connection in, and then you have your XLR connection out where you would have your USB. That would also, I believe, work. I think it does. Yeah, it's, I was going to do that way, but I wanted for almost half this price. It was about $20 for the phantom power supply. But then you don't get these extra features. So I'd rather, I was like, ah, I'd rather spend $30 more to get the gain, the mic, all these different features. And most of them you don't need. This half, this, this is other stuff. You can. So what I'm doing right now is I'm monitoring myself. So you plug a pair of headphones in and you can hear yourself talk from the, uh, from the audio interface. So I hear myself speaking right now through the microphone. So that's how I can monitor, I can monitor um, how the, uh, the, the sound uh, is. And I can even monitor clipping so I'm clipping right now so that's bad I shouldn't clip wait let me lower it there we go so now I'm not clipping so I can also monitor if I'm clipping left and right so if I'm getting too close and other things so this, this is what's blinking right now blinking green and if you change this then it will show you uh, what it's at so let's uh, turn that to the left right like that all right see that's cool um other stuff you probably need so the nice thing about this microphone it comes with a uh, comes with a shock mount so I was also looking at the uh, AT2020, and the the one thing I was looking for is a shock mount for that, and I, I got to like 170, and I was like, no, I can't do that. I can't throw 170 at a microphone. But I saw this for 79, where the, the, AT, the AT2020 was $99 just for the microphone. So I was like, oh, I see this, and it has a lot of reviews, and it's equally as good as the AT2020. So I was like, oh, let me get this. And then I get the shock mount, and then I only need the stand, 
and then the wire and the audio interface. And that's another thing. This does not come with the XLR cable. You need to buy this cable with any uh, XLR microphone. They usually do not come with the uh, the actual connection. So that's where you would really want to actually buy um, the the c connector. And then you need the audio interface especially to uh, to power it and to get your... Uh, your computer to understand how to, to play it. So here's the AT2020 right here, and it's the same, very similar condenser microphone. See, you can't, you can't, um, I wish I had a video camera. I gotta get that soon as well. Um, you can't, um, if I, I'm talking directly in front of it, so you have to speak directly in front of the MXL logo. If I start turning to the side, you'll start hearing that the sound kind of sounds like muffled. And then if I come back around and then go to the other side, it's gonna sound muffled as well, because I'm not talking directly into the condenser. I'm talking to the side of it, so it's not sounding as clear. And then I'm back to the front, and even like above, it's gonna sound weird. And then my voice just cracked because reasons. And uh, if I go down, it's gonna it's gonna do the same thing. And this microphone picks up background noise like crazy. Like if I move the cable on my desk for my headphones, um, it just you hear everything. You hear every little sound, every every little click. So that could be, if you're in a very noisy environment, you try to eliminate that. I've attempted to eliminate the, that the best I can. Like I have my dog barking in the background, my parents walking in and out of the kitchen because it's right next to my room. So like that could be a downfall if this microphone, if you're in a noisy environment, this microphone not, might not be for you. And if you're just starting YouTube, you might just want to get a normal USB microphone because there's less cost. Usually a USB microphone, I think this one was 125 in USB variant, but I bought this one because of upgradability and like the ability to, if I say this is good, but I can get a better audio interface, then I will. So that's, that's the reason why, like say I want to upgrade to this one in the future, then I can because I'm not limited to buy a USB connection. I can always change the audio interface and with the Scarlett, you can have different features. This has a, a, a software program. I'm probably looking into buying this. The, the Frost the Frostrite uh, Scarlet 2i2. Two, two it, it's a very good um, audio interface. And if you have more money, because I didn't have the funds to actually buy a better um, audio interface at the time of me doing this whole process, um, I probably could have bought a better audio interface and probably maybe made the sound even sound any better. So this this video is kind of just like a warning. If, if you have more money, then save. If you can save more money, do it because... The sound in the end will be better, and then you can do a lot more with a XLR microphone than a USB, because you're always be, you only be limited to the USB connection, so you can only record to a computer. Say so if if and in the case if I ever went somewhere with this microphone, I can plug it into their setup to their big table of an audio interface. You can plug it in and then use it for any uh, studio, and you can bring it around. So it's multi-function. So that's why I really um, was able to do this and wanted to do it. Uh, over the to a USB microphone, but if you're using a USB microphone, it's fine. Um, I used um, the Blue Snowball for about a year, and it was fantastic. And um, I was even looking at the, uh, the 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 Blue Yeti. That was really what I was going to get. But then I decided, eh, I went USB once. Let me go XLR this route. And um, if, yeah, if you're using USB, keep it. It's it's not that big a deal to actually um, do this. If you want to jump into the whole XLR and um, analog uh, microphones, you can. This is very much an entry-level microphone. There's a lot more uh, options than this. This is very entry-level. This is for entry-level. It's entry-level, but it sounds like beyond anything of a USB microphone. So, um, basically... If you like how my voice sounds, it could be different to your voice as well. Like, my voice is kind of deep, but not really at times. Only certain states, like, settings and states. Uh, what? <laughs> Only at certain times it will get deeper. And then sometimes it will just be, like, a little kid squeaking and a squeaker and all that stuff. But it's up to you. If you like the sound that it produces as you hear this video, then go for it. And just make sure you get an audio interface and you get a wire and you get a stand. So that's the reason. This is the a stand I bought. This is the stand I have, and um, nice stand. This um, pop, the um, shock mount goes on top of the stand, and you're all set. And I probably recommend a pop filter. Get a pop filter. They recommend that as well because they say um, if you're uh, how do I say this in a nice way? If you're a spitter and you spit a lot and you uh, um, let out a lot of uh, saliva, it it can damage the actual microphone. It can da damage the condenser inside the microphone. 
So you might find that you want a pop filter. And also, if you say the word P a lot, like P, 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 it, it helps to reduce the um, extreme uh, pop it makes uh, in the microphone, hence the name pop filter. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. Please rate, like, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.